Namaste everyone. Welcome to the Charvak Podcast. This is your host Kushal Mehra. All right, today's podcast is titled uh, "The Crisis in Punjab." And to talk about with uh, the crisis in Punjab, I have Sherbir Banak. Sherbir is a financial crimes and a corporate governance lawyer. You must have seen him uh, write multiple op-eds on different media outlets, and you you will see him on mainstream media time and again too. Sherbir, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Kushal. Absolute pleasure to be here. All right, so share we uh, let's start with this. So first of all, the reason so I I'll share my reasons why I called it the crisis in Punjab is because I don't believe this is the crisis. The real crisis is not what is happening over here. The real crisis is something that we will discuss in the latter half of the podcast, which uh, is which is something to do with the economy of Punjab and many other things, which I think every serious person should be worried about. But let's let's start over here. So so. So, what do you make of this uh, entire uh, uh, song and dance right now? Where I, I mean, I don't understand. Everybody around Amrit Pal seems to be caught, but Amrit Pal is not caught. What the hell, Kushal? I think let's let's take a few steps back and come to come to the impasse of Amrit Pal's um, the current police operation against him right at the end. But let's start from the very beginning. Amrit Pal virtually came out of nowhere, and I think that raises that to any reasonable person gives you all the suspicions you need about this man. For someone who was clean shaven, who was in 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 Dubai, came back out of nowhere suddenly, has very limited knowledge of scripture, um, speaks like a charlatan, um, talks at times like a talks in rhetoric. Can't answer a straight question, but started uh, definitely started a movement. I don't think he got got to where he wanted to be. He had all the potential of of becoming of of becoming far more dangerous than he already was, but um, and that is where he ought to have been nipped in the bud. And I feel there was short term political gain at play, which delayed the action. And the culmination of that kushal was at Ajnama. <clears throat> and there'll be three parts to the Ajnala story. Firstly, the element that Amrit Pal came to the scene, and I think at some point, and you know, while he's denied in all his interviews that he has nothing to do with, uh, or try, he's not trying to embody uh, Janelle Singh Pentrawale, but he there was there was evident uh, he was evidently trying, and I think his design was very very clear to do something similar to what happened with Pentrawale's supporters and and. Uh, uh, the Nirankaris. And he wanted by not trying to, I'm not trying to draw parallels to the two events. What I'm trying to say is that he was trying to achieve the same objective, a police firing incident, uh, <clears throat> something that would have resulted in, in uh, that could, that would capital, uh, that would, uh, that would catapult him to the next, to the next level. And it started with that. The police for played into his, his, his plan. He came there as a coward with the Shri Guru Granth Sahib. To uh, as and used it as a shield, even though he's given all kinds of vague answers on why it was not uh, why he didn't use the Shri Guru Granth Sahib as a as a shield, but did so. The police unfortunately capitulated, allowed him. You know, somebody who uh, somebody who's literally his the amount of Amrit he's he's uh, chakod in in Punjabi. Given that how quickly he's sort of changed his clothes, clearly shows that he was using this as a costume to negotiate with the police the way he did, to release the videos, to release the kind of threats he did. And, and then for the police to capitulate and say, well, you know, he's given us evidence and end of the story, that this, this legal process. I'm not a fan of our criminal justice system and how long it takes, but this is not our criminal justice system at its finest hour in, in under any circumstance. And even after that happened, assuming there was pressure, even in the peak of militancy, a police station was not overrun. Kushal in Punjab. And to have a situation like this that, that took place, and then for the police at senior levels to give, give statements, um, sort of uh, basically giving him a giving him a clean chit and no action being taken after that. A direct affront being made to the country's home minister. You can agree with Mr. Shah's politics and disagree with them, but the fact of the matter is he holds a constitutional office. And you cannot threaten somebody who holds a constitutional office. End of story. There are no ifs and buts to such to such to such matters. 
And after that, there was his, after that, after, so there's one part is Ajnala. After Ajnala is part two where he did, went around doing all these interviews, every, several news me and media outlets interviewed him. He spoke all sorts of stuff. Very few people challenged him. I don't know out of fear or lack of knowledge on Punjab. And, and, and this, this really was where I think events started taking their, their, their course. I will say that the police action there and after is absolutely welcomed, welcomed by, 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 by most of us from, from Punjab. And I'd go by the old age saying, they say, I durustai. It had to have happened, but it had to have happened much sooner. Now that it is happening, um, I really don't know what to say because everybody but Amritpal is caught. Videos of Amritpal are showing up every second day from the police. It's not that you know it's some it's it's the it's the it's the new world of um, of uh, of leaked videos which would only show up with with ANI. They're showing and the police is is giving these is is giving these these videos and we and we we can't seem to catch him. And, and that, um, um, so I, I can only hope at this juncture that um, they are close on his heels and he's arrested. And what's really needed is at this juncture, and we can talk more about, about him, but what's really needed is a model investigation and a model prosecution. The last thing the government can afford, center and state, is for a sloppy prosecution that doesn't that that has holes in it because there is going to be there are going to be folks who are going to be watching this very closely. There needs to be a model prosecution. There's all the evidence in the world to convict him. The right sections have to be applied, and there should not be anything extra judicial or extra legal about it. I would say that for Amrit Pal or anybody else for that matter, we must prosecute within the contours of the rule of law in a democracy that we that we are. So I think that's that's my short roundup on how I see um, see this um, in brief. But I actually do agree with you on, on three points especially. The first one is the most important point that the way Amrit Pal and his associates you know go around uh, using the Sri Guru Granth Sahib almost as a shield. It, it says a lot about uh, their mentality Amritpal's uh, intellectual capacity and uh, like I use this as an analogy if you read Indian history you know during the first line of Islamic invasion in India people don't remember the, the and these are quotes directly from uh, you know the Chachnama and many other cases like there are stories where the in invaders found out ki, okay apparently you know these people who are here if I put a cow in front or if I put a Murti in front, these people apparently don't attack. So I found their Achilles heel. So I'm going to kind of be a free rider on this in an evolutionary sense. And I'm going to free ride on this while they do. I mean, uh, and then, you know, these are the same people who talk about Bayadbi in Punjab. Like, isn't this Bayadbi? Absolutely. I could not agree more. And most importantly, Kushal, on the point of Amrit Pal and his supporters referring to Bayadbi, in Gurdwaras, they were breaking chairs and benches for the elderly on the principle that nobody should be should be seated. And even though most Gurdwaras take precautions to ensure that the that the that um, uh, <clears throat> that the stools and the and the benches and the chairs are below the below the Sri Guru Granth Sahib, and these guys were going around breaking that. Where well, that is real bedvi, you are preventing somebody from being able to come into 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 a Gurdwara. And here, they were willing to use the Shri Guru Granth Sahib as a shield, were willing to allow for a precipitating circumstance where, where something could have happened. And that should, sort of shows their sinister motive. They really wanted the police to act improperly at that moment so that they could capitalize it for vanity and political gain. Again, you know, I was hearing somewhere, uh, I think it was a Chandigarh Tribune report, if I remember correctly, that... That Sidhu, Deep Sidhu, who, who was the original founder of Varis Punjab there, he found Amritpal to be too 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 much. He's like, hey, yaar, ke thodi gaya kind of a thing. <laughs> who the hell is this dude now? There's there's been a lot written um about this. And in fact, there's um um 
there's <clears throat> there's some very good reports that have been published in um, in the scroll or the quint i'm not i'm not uh, sure by by a journalist aditya and he has really he is he's reported that um it appears that deep sindhu blocked amritpal uh, after their initial contact even how amritpal was anointed as sort of the successor to varis punjab there is a lot of controversy with deep sindhu's own family not uh, not supporting it not that i believe family should support one's political movements but uh, just putting it out there that there is this this strife but i think to if we take all of this away and the broader point that emerges is for somebody to come out of nowhere there was there was definitely a mischievous hand at play and and we had some very i would say precipitating circumstances and i know you said kushal we're going to talk about larger problems impacting punjab subsequently but i will say that <clears throat> that during the farmers protest where there was there were elements including deep sindhu who was sort of trying to evangelize the khalistani cause or speak improperly about or 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 give their views on the matter but for the large part there were those who were there who believed they wanted to protest against the 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 the, the farm laws and and i think the response that came from several sections um um on social media and otherwise to start calling at a blanket level calling sikhs khalistanis and claiming the whole farmers movement was was uh, was was one to claim khalist uh, to claim um, khalistan and look there were a, a improper events there was the, what happened at red fort is something that i have spoken very very strongly against that can't happen and you can't have that there, there cannot be any binary to to uh, to to violence but that narrative left um was something that and in fact i wrote an op-ed about this that these kind of schisms are exactly what those against the affairs of india and including outside india including pakistan for that matter of fact would just be waiting for to to sort of to sort of weaponize a situation like 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 this and for all these years we've had no conversation on khalistan most of us have sort of most of of a, a young generation in punjab today wasn't uh, wasn't uh, a, somebody who was who was born in 1984 is today nearing 40 years old so there's a there's a whole generation um, maybe two close to two generations that where we've had peace and harmony in 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 punjab there was no conversation in fact i for example don't know i have recently been started called where every time i have any form of disagreement with the policy or i critique something i get called a get called the khalistani this never happened this this is this is a recent uh, recent phenomenon and i think there are those of us who sort of brush it away as saying we don't like it and we shouldn't like it and nobody should be asked to uh, should be asked to affirm their patriotism to their to their uh, country <clears throat> but at the same point of time there are when you take the broader socio economic challenges in punjab and you take this sort of concentrated attack that happened at that point of time it created a breeding ground for someone like amritpal to come in um or deep sidhu for that matter to come in you know god bless his soul he he sort of uh, he's unfortunately passed away and uh, but at the same point of time the 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 chain of thought that was emerging from both these these sources was is is equally equally dangerous and the takers in my view became or the sympathy um through a still small section would have not been there if if we didn't have this sort of precipitating event of you know 20, late 2020 to throughout 2020 2021 um that sort of had had some role to play in this question yeah i i i hear i hear you and i kind of understand where you're coming from uh, in fact people forget that the the farmers movement I mean, to be very honest, मैंने एक बार एक क्वेश्चन सोशल मीडिया पे गलती से पूछ लिया तो लोग मेरे पर भी चढ़ गए थे फार्मर्स प्रोटेस्ट आई आई फंडामेंटली एग्रीड विद द लॉज आई हैव प्रॉब्लम्स विद दिस होल एम एस पी मॉडल एट अ इकोनॉमिकल लेवल बट इकोनॉमिक्स लेवल बट आई सेड कभी जाके अगर ऐसा है तो 
जो मंडी में बैठने वाले महाजन हिंदू होते हैं उनसे भी पूछ लो उनको फार्मर लॉ से क्या सपोर्ट था कि अगेंस्ट थे आई आई हैड रेज दिस लोगों को बड़ा गुस्सा आ गया था एज आई ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड ह्यूमन बीइंग्स आर ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी लविंग स्टेटस को इफ द स्टेटस को सपोर्ट्स देम सो आई आई गेट वेट योर बट ह्यूज एंगल शेरवीर वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट दिस बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट ऑफलाइन आल्सो सो यू नरेटेड दैट इंसिडेंट व्हेन यू आर इन लंदन आई विल नरेट इंसिडेंट्स व्हेन आई एम इन कनाडा लाइक आई गो टू कनाडा look you are a punjabi you meet punjabis it's very natural it's just the way human beings are you know cultural homophily is real you tend to gather around people because there are common tastes multiple things although i am born and raised in mumbai so i can hang out with a gujarati and marathi as much as i can hang out with a punjabi but i understand this what the hell are those people i mean i'm sorry i don't get those people so what do we do with the diaspora <laughs> punjabi community and i'm not painting all of them in the same brush but man there are some issues there no kushal i think i you're absolutely right there are some issues there and of course i think we've we've already set the ground rules there are no generalizations i'm not making any and we know that um, and i think we'll i'll proceed on that premise there is a large component of the diaspora who has limited information information from second hand third hand sources statistically implausible information sometimes one gets quoted with figures of the number of people who've been who've been killed or um, arrested or detained which sort of outweighs the population of punjab today and back and and back back then and um, there is and and there is that information has its own life because it helps local politicians there obtain political uh, patronage it helps a significant number of them seek citizenship in fact uh, i'll share a recent example in november 2022 i was in new york um, and uh, the ve- the the driver of the car who was taking me to the dropping me to the airport mentioned that he's from punjab so i generally are like as you said all punjabis we ask where are you from what are you doing and he was trying to come in here on an on an asylum case on the basis that uh, um that he was a sim- that he was a supporter of mr simranjit singh man and here mr simranjit singh man is in parliament but at the same point of time there are others who are trying to claim a persecution are trying to claim persecution to seek political asylum in other countries so there is there's a vicious cycle at the same point of time can we wash away things that have happened incorrectly no we can't there is punjab went through a very bloody period of violence there were police excesses there were state uh, excesses these are elements that have been to some extent accepted and admitted by the state to some extent not and yes we do need a truth and reconciliation exercise but we don't need a truth and reconciliation the, the the element of a truth and reconciliation exercise starts with truth it doesn't start with myth and and unfortunately the diaspora through through those who have sort of become mainstream politicians there on the basis of this myth are completely out of touch with out of touch with the ground reality in punjab out of touch with with what the average punjabi wants what the average sikh wants are are out there spreading these uh, spreading these um, um stories and that has a has a trickle down effect backwards you know the the violence at the at our embassies and consulates apart which is must be condoned and condemned in the strongest possible words you also have every average household in punjab has one person in canada or north america or 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 the united kingdom and by virtue of that there are funds that come back there is uh, a slightly exalted status of those who are outside india as opposed to those who are here and that this time machine set ideology finds its way back in 2018 i met somebody who asked me at a leading london law firm asked me uh, mr punar what do you think about the 2020 referendum i'm like what are you talking about are we talking are you guys planning to have another brexit referendum that i'm unaware of but because nobody in india knew about this 2020 referendum all the freaking voting has happened and pardon my french has happened in uh, in canada and the united kingdom so i think if on lighter note if there has to be some you know some uh, 
culmination of this Khalistani dream. Let it be in Canada. You know, they, they already have their challenges with the population and they have vast areas and, you know, go for it. But I, there, there are no takers in Punjab. Another thing that I've noticed is the kind of bullying that happens of innocent Sikh, Sikh people over there. So my Kani, but I always use Balraj Dehl Saab as an example. I don't know how many people know this great son of India, now a Canadian, a proud Canadian and a proud Indian both. And how they viciously attacked him in the 80s. He was almost dead. Naseeb se wo bach gaye. He ran a Punjabi weekly in Toronto for for the longest time. Now he's retired, and and there and there are many such stories. I mean, Balraj Dehl Saab is just one of the many stories. I mean, to me personally, he's like a hero. When you when you meet people uh, like Balraj Dehl, you realize how much pressure there is, and the violent tendencies is what scared me the most. Like if you. If you speak against these people over there, they they don't shy away from using violence as a tool to shut you down. And, you know, you would think on average the rule of law works better in the West. And, and let's be very clear. We are both in India by choice, not by compulsion. But the point is it still doesn't change the reality. The West has better law and order functioning than us. And even there, there is no shame. आप अगर इतना भी कर दो जैसे मुझे याद है माल्टन गुरुद्वारा आई आई जस्ट कॉल माल्टन गुरुद्वारा इज खालिस्तान सेंट्रल टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट लाइक कनाडा में माल्टन गुरुद्वारा जो है वहां पे तो मतलब इतनी अजीब चीजें होती है आई रिमेंबर गोइंग एंड टॉकिंग टू अ कॉप मैं आज की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं बहुत साल पहले ही हुआ एज अ यू डू रियलाइज दीस गाइस आर सेपरेटिस्ट राइट इट्स लाइक या बट वी कांट डू एनीथिंग एज लाइक नो बट इफ आई गो एंड अपोज दे विल बीट मी अप and he's like no they won't and they literally beat someone up then and the cops were just looking at okay you should go because it's not good for your safety like recently samir kaushal went there and he was just recording what was ha- what was happening in the recent protest like a few days ago and they started roughing him up too so ye kaha se ho gaya kushal i don't know canada as well as you do uh, unfortunately never traveled there so i can't really um, Uh, speak much to uh, your experiences in certain places but i can definitely um, share sentiments of uh, seeing similar situations unfold in the united kingdom whether it is um, um, interfaith marriages at gurdwaras and the manner and and for a community and a religion that was supposed to be welcoming all everyone from all walks of all walks of all walks of life to sort of behave in this manner in this unruly manner and become holier than the holier than 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 the scriptures and holier than even um, even um, you know the akal takht for that uh, for that matter is definitely um, is is definitely um, remains concerning and at the same point of time yes the 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 violence remains uh, um, um the violence is again something that that crops up um there are very heated conversations the kind of threats that get made whether online or in in person are very are are distasteful um it's almost like they that if you don't agree with khalistan which is at best it's not a it's not a religious identity if at all it's a political movement if you don't agree with that political movement calls get made to derobe you to take your turban off and things like that that's um there is um and 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 i think that sort of goes comes back to the same principle of an uninformed poorly informed diaspora a significant majority there in who have weaponized myth for local political gain and ends up with a trickle back to punjab and every now and then uh, and uh, and also um 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 and 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 also engage in in violent acts uh, so that's that's pretty pretty much sums up sums up um, the diaspora question as far as i'm concerned yeah one with sharam kya aati hai yaar sherveer so having lunch with uh, some friends sikh the hum log purane mere in laws ke family friends hai wo ghar pe baithe hum log aur itne sharamsar ho rahe the wo family 
वो मतलब पंजाबी में बोल रहे थे आई एम नॉट गोना रिपीट व्हाट वाज सेड इन पंजाबी आई एम गोना ट्रांसलेट इट इन इंग्लिश इज दिस बेसिकली इज एक बहुत नाम हम लोग रोशन कर रहे हैं इधर अपना इज एक क्राइम्स में हमारे बच्चे आगे आते जा रहे हैं एंड दिस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ पंजाबी फैमिली दैट्स इन कनाडा नाउ फॉर द लास्ट 30 इयर्स दिस इज एक क्राइम्स में आप नाम देखो सारे हमारे नाम होंगे एंड आई वाज लाइक हां मैंने ब्रिटिश कोलंबिया के 11 मोस्ट वांटेड देखे सारे अपने लोग लिटरली सारे अपने लोग हैं ऑल ऑफ देम मैंने बोला बहुत नाम कमा रहे हैं हम लोग यहाँ पे और और जो जो खुराफाते करनी है वो करो एंड द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट यू सेड वाज़ द फर्स्ट जनरेशन दैट वेंट देयर राइट दे स्टिल हैड अ बैक एंड फोर्थ बट द लेवल ऑफ रेडिकलाइजेशन दैट आई नोटिस इन द सेकंड जनरेशन व्हिच इज बॉर्न देयर व्हिच इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दे हैव कंप्लीटली यू नो बॉट इन दिस कॉक एंड बुल रबिश of of oh the victimhood mentality and all of that but having said this as you know punjabis who are in india who go over there or who interact with people what should be a punjabi's reply to them that that is where i think that is where we should focus how do we reply to this rubbish i think um, since you are a student of history and an avid reader i'm going to start with the book for anybody who wants to understand punjab um during its most difficult and bloody period i would strongly recommend that they read turmoil in punjab by mr ramesh indar singh uh mr ramesh indar singh has probably written the most authentic no holds barred account he's he's called out himself included he's called out um the the police administration the state administration the um the civil servants um political leader leadership the military everybody um and given them a fair sense of of what's transpired and he's also given uh he's also busted a lot of myths that were that have been that have been circulated over a period of time and just converted into by virtue of no unchallenged by virtue of no challenge to the myth had keep getting passed on as fact i think that's number number 1 i think number 2 would be to constructively engage um with them constructively engage and explain to them where the where punjab stands today where india stands um stands today why what, even at its peak the khalistan movement never kicked off uh, in even at its if you if you read uh, even mr ramesh indar singh's account even the final days of just prior to blue star there was lots of there was there's a lot of um, um controversy around whether or not pindra wale actually made a demand for khalistan or not um and whether that demand got made or did not get um um uh, get made did it get called out did the who supported it who did not support it and if you look at um and, and it sort of becomes important to engage on these elements and engage why a majority of punjab a far majority as in we are we are talking i think there's a there's a minuscule minority who who where who are the odd balls the vast majority has put an end to this bloody chapter embraced their their uh, indianness and their identity and i think it's important to sort of get out of this identity crisis and start focusing on our bigger problems of what's happening the lack of our uh, our lack of our employment opportunities the economic state of affairs in 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 punjab the drug problem in fact no movie no documentary no netflix show can 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 give you even an iota of how deep and uh, pervasive the drug problem and the narco corruption in punjab uh, punjab is these are our real issues these are today's issues and and to live in a time warp is not going to constructively help anybody i i couldn't agree more with you before we get into these real issues i i also want to talk about this uh, the one thing that hurts me the most and uh, people who follow me on social media or you know listen to this podcast or watch it on youtube you know because this is the audio version too they know every time i discuss punjab i always tell people be sensitive to what comes out of your mouth you had mentioned social media the level of 
anti sikh bigotry and the level oh man i have seen some khalistani handles like the, the, the standard line now for from the khalistani handles for anybody like me is o oh, tu gau muttar wala i mean i first of all i think they don't know i am a disbeliever so even the the kind of damn accusation they are giving it doesn't like it, it doesn't bother me but the the level of bigotry whether it's from side a to side b and side b to side which is the and and i'm very serious when i say this to everybody who's watching this there is a reason why i decided i have to speak with sherbir about this like when i reached out to abhijit i told abhijit uh, by the way abhijit uh, ayer is responsible for this he introduced us and i told abhijit ne mere ko sherbir se hi baat karni hai i insisted i said we have to talk about this ke kya ho raha hai i mean we can't have this kind of a scenario where sikhs and hindus are calling each other such ridiculous names what is wrong with our people kushal thanks for raising that and i'm going to start by by making a submission that even at the peak of violence in punjab where there were targeted killing of hindus and 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 the thing about punjab is that long back the identity of being punjabi sort of was an all encompassing identity and you could be punjabi sikh you could be punjabi hindu you could be punjabi muslim um that was that was the core identity and even at the peak of violence where sikhs were killed hindus were killed if you look at the statements that were made by the political leadership religious organizations um at that point of time it was all about harmony and it was about knowing that we are all fighting a common enemy of extremism out here and that discourse in was the discourse prevalent in punjab's bloodiest days in fact some of the statements of the bharatiya janata party's uh, lead uh uh leadership during that uh, that period was um, was all about about peace and harmony uh during during this time and likewise whether it's the sgpc or the akali dal they both really uh you know stood their ground on this and that was one of the reasons why when th- this we did this did not continue this wasn't an in continuum hatred between two communities we all the reconciliation happened on the point that there were extremists and they were accre- extremists who resulted in the death of innocents across religious lines and from there to where our narrative has today descended where if you are a turban wearing sikh you and have a disagreement with the government of the day you are anti national you should go back to pakistan you should you are a khalistani as as in and and unfortunately the our discourse is equally bad on all sides you know it's equally i see sufficient you know several people who who use you know the the unparliamentary language you cited call people sanghi so on and so forth and in fact couple of years back i i tried starting a trend on twitter with a few people by nominating them and saying let's take all this language out let's take tukde tukde gang and all of this i think the biggest disservice one indian can do to the other is to question their patriotism there is nothing to me that can be more shameful than doing so in a democracy we can disagree we can disagree all we like somebody can protest somebody can disagree with what they are protesting about a third party can say that both of them are wrong that is a democracy and we need to respect that but unfortunately we have taken our level of discourse to such levels that today it doesn't even make logical sense you know the people want to send people to pakistan from geographically impossible locations in india and we have we have created created a a narrative that it's it's our way or the highway and everybody everybody in the political spectrum really has to do some very serious introspection um introspection on this point um Uh, the kind of abuse one sees against one's uh, to see to sees one's uh, against one's muslim friends um, online it's and equally against uh, against those who are sort of uh, from you know uh, 
uh, promoting interests of Hindus. I think we've just we've just taken it to an absolute trash level of conversation. There is not we are not trying to find a solution. We are we are just trying to look for you know the most choicest abuse one can can find. And then after that, we are all upset with the consequences that such trash talk uh, uh, that such trash talk and depraved narratives um, create. So it's it's truly very 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 upsetting to uh, to to say the least. In fact, you know, one one grew up lived in Punjab at different points of time, um, never got called anything. Never, never got called. My father was in the army. I've studied in schools from Tamil Nadu to Hisar to to uh, you know to to Jodhpur and across the across the the the, the country. It's never something like this never happened. And and to cut to this today that we're just at it is just is very very saddening. Yeah, imagine like I have said this again in the past. I was like, "Kya kal ko bol doge bulle shah nahi sunna." I mean, I don't want to hear it and I don't want to read it. Bulle shah ko, what kind of a stupid thing is this? No, no, that is his religion. This is his. I don't our care. Strength, Kushal. Our pluralism. Yeah. Our pluralism is our strength. We've learned so much from all all our communities, all our religions have all contributed to the diversity that uh, that India is. and that is our strength we take that away we are very we, we 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 will really be taking away a very core element of being indian yeah and and this is why uh, i i wanted to touch upon this topic also because i wanted to make this statement with you that uh, beyond the point the the relationship that punjabis have whether and yes there are some muppets in the diaspora who will try their level best to ruin this relationship but they've not been uh, able to even break it even today yaar logo ko realize nahi hota aaj bhi gurudwaron mein sirf sikh nahi jate bhar bhar ke hindu bhi jate hain gurudwaron mein bhar bhar ke jate hain seva bhi karte hain bilkul and, and, and this is there are this enough changing, stories, right? there are enough stories of how communities have lived in harmony with each other for years and generations and taken pride in in you know i think the, the simple things the fact that across the country to a large section we nobody eats beef and equally does not eat pork uh, just gives you our respect for sensitivity to each to each uh, to each other Punjab is replete with stories that yes, we faced extremely bloody violence, for example, uh, during partition. But uh, for example, where I come from in Fatehgarh Sahib, we have the Rosa Sharif, and the Rosa Sharif uh, is is standing tall, right next to one of the most holiest shrines of the Sikhs, which is the Fateh the uh, Fatehgarh Sahib Gurdwara, where uh, uh, the two Sahib Zadas, uh, the uh, uh, Guru Gobind Singh's. Um, sons were were uh, were bricked alive by the mughals and and that is our that is our joint identity um, across the board it's you know temples that have been protected gurdwaras that have been protected even at the during some of the world i think the, the recent movie that uh, diljit dosanjh did called jogi even though it's a fictional account there are multiple stories where where humanity prevailed and people came out to support each other and stood together against against those who against extremism extremist elements fringe elements and as opposed to weaponizing those fringe elements and those extremists against each other and i think if we if we follow the same route i wouldn't say ancestors but our previous generations have done we are in safe hands even in the face of adversity but if we don't we are going to be staring at some challenges that they have not stared at yeah i agree now let's go into the real crisis in punjab as you rightfully said it is drugs and it is the economy oh, who was it i think it was jay leno who had used this line in one of his stand up skits it's the economy stupid it always is the economy right and and people just, hey i don't know what punjab is going to do look there have been reports after reports that even if you look at the percentage of pesticides used in agriculture it is the highest in punjab not good the soil quality in punjab is dying we are relying uh, that state is relying too much on uh, you know water uh, you know 
like uh, crops that use too much water they should be moving out of those things getting into millets and maybe other stable agricultural options i i have seen presentations after presentations about this what do we do first let's talk about this agricultural model and then maybe you can explain where do we take the economy of the state post agriculture then kushal that agriculture reform is needed in punjab and for that matter in the sort of northern part of india which is used to a traditional you know two crop farming model is beyond is a foregone conclusion um you know that we need agriculture we need serious agriculture reform we need there's there's a long history to it in terms of why this the two crop cycle came into place the food crisis india was was dealing with how farmers were incentivized from in in punjab uttar pradesh haryana to take take this on even at the cost of what it was going to do to the water table the gmos there there that there's there's a very long history to 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 it uh, that that needs to be disentangled um and a solution that that is found that 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 that's that brings a fair degree of economic uh, um justice but there will be a pain period there will be a pain period as there is for 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 reform we definitely need meaningful reform that reform is not going to be easy um i'm not going to really get into the the nuts and bolts of the the farm laws let me start by articulating my position which is reform was definitely needed we needed there was a lot of reform outlined in the farm laws that needed to come in but there was equally the a number of elements including the manner of which recourse was going to be taken out the price fixing models etc which would have just created significantly larger problems so there there is need for a for a cohesive coalition to bring about uh, to bring about agricultural reform and make agriculture in punjab much more profitable um given the fertility which is only going to go down with each passing year given given the level of uh, even though our output still remains one of the, 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 you know almost if you if you sort of we are the third highest output state and the other two states that we are in comparison with are significantly larger than 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 punjab but all of that notwithstanding we need we need a new green revolution and we need a green revolution that is in sync with the environment i don't know if you've had a chance to see these videos that have been circulating about an incident that took place in fazilka where a tornado sort of storm was uh, uh, brewed we, our water table has gone significantly down we've virtually by virtue of this sort of increased need for agriculture we have uh, sorry by not saying increased need for agriculture to sort of increase output through non scientific methods we've sort of lasered and flattened the fields Com- completely you you know punjab w- was undulating land we don't have undulating land anymore our tree cover has come down um, significantly we are we have serious se- we are we are going to be facing a very serious environmental challenge uh, as well which will further complicate problems for a economy that is significantly agrarian based we've not been able to promote industry in in a in a in a meaningful manner there are virtually no jobs we may have we have some private universities some fairly prominent private universities reasonably well established government universities um from veterinary sciences in in ludhiana to punjab university in chandigarh punjabi university in patiala um um uh, and and private universities like the lovely professional university etc but we don't have employment we cannot absorb them within 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 the state um and and we need that that push needs to come up we have a immense debt that um um our our fiscal debt is extremely high in terms of what we owe the owe the center and we need to find a solution there i'm not going to sort of say that punjab needs arms uh by arms i don't mean arms i mean arms uh, alms but at the same point uh what we we definitely need a constructive solution to the debt that the state incurred during its its bloodiest and darkest period um and there is a very important there is a requirement to have a a constructive financial solution uh for solution, solution there almost sort of a national duty where i believe the center and state must come together and find a find a solution and create uh circumstances for for a one time improve uh, you know a one time grant for um for uh, promoting um um 
industry and the economy um, in the state because otherwise we are we are an absolute collapsible model somebody sell firstly contrary to popular belief there are no large land holdings in punjab the average land holding in punjab is is sort of uh, less than 3 acres and you cannot do anything in 3 acres uh, uh, no matter you you can't make minimum wage on 3 acres but you can sell 3 acres and make a lot of money because of the relative land prices being high and there and after you're left with you're left with nothing so there we have a there is a myriad of of economic problems that we are we are facing that need some that need that need the center and state to come together it's just not one of them that can happen with uh, with a state government uh, alone and i'm not trying to make any excuses for this state government or any previous state government it it requires a much a much uh, wider conversation and the spill off of our sort of economic crisis which has not been brewing from today it's been brewing for a while is is everything else that we see in terms of crime as in look at the kind of conversations we are having about gangs in punjab as in it's it's uh, to to it's it you know to from from a relative from a period of relative peace it's almost like uh, from the fire to the frying pan uh, out here Siddu Musewala's uh, horrific murder is is a case in point um, uh, on this, and and our drug problem, which again has ha is requires a serious, serious, serious cleanup. The narco corruption is just is is political. It is state administration. It is. Um, it is fueled and funneled by 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 pakistan we have an extremely we 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 are going to be facing a generation uh, we're going to lose we are at the we've lost we've clo we've almost lost the generation and we are on the verge of going to be losing the next generation to drugs um it is and and one doesn't realize realize it i was in fatehgarh sahib in november in sorry in, in december uh, last year and um, Uh, outside the drug addiction clinic at the government hospital you have to hear the story is crucial to see it first hand as in you there is just nothing that can the doctors are overworked who are trying their best to find uh, you know treatment plans they don't have beds they don't have the ability to to do so because it's just such a wide scale problem you farming in punjab is no longer done by punjabis contrary to popular belief it is it is it is uh, laborers and farm hands who come from up and bihar who yeah. are farming yeah, because the average average punjabi is in no physical state to do so all those songs of your of you know hard work in the fields etc etc is not um, is is not what one actually sees today we are we are really facing again general we are not, not making generalization but rather giving commentary on the grave crisis that is uh, staring us in our uh, staring us in our in our face so it's a and then coupled and that's when you have time and place for for extremist um, you know movement because you have an unemployed unemployed youth who doesn't have uh, opportunity and that's where you go from uh, and it it becomes a conduit it's a it's a segue to to um, uh to to violence yeah i, I agree in fact uh, on the drugs issue <laughs> was speaking with family members on and off and they'd be like ha bhaiya har teesre ghar mein aap jaoge to aapko mil jayegi i mean aise matlab it it was shocking to hear and then you know i actually had to ask him oye tu to nahi leta mata nahi bhaiya main nahi karta to and uh, it is very common it is very unfortunate and nobody tends to take it seriously which is very scary and uh, ek you know punjab mein aisi koi political party reh gayi hai jisne punjab ki band nahi bajayi ho i am very serious like meko to koi sharam bhi nahi aa rahi hai bolne mein all of them all of them unhone saath mein baith kyunki see again i have never hidden my voting preference मगर यार आप हाउ कैन यू से कि अकालियों ने किया कोएलिशन पार्टनर कौन था उनके साथ कोएलिशन तो थी ना मैं एज अ बीजेपी वोटर ये बोल रहा हूं फिर कांग्रेस आती है फिर वहां भी वही तमाशा होता है अभी आप आई है 
वहां पे भी वही तमाशा हो रहा है ये लोग कुछ करते तो है नहीं तो आदमी जाए किसके पास आर आर प्रॉब्लम्स हैव बीन कंपाउंडेड एंड अलाउड टू फेस्टर बाय ऑल पार्टीज इन हु हैव फॉर्म्ड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड ऑल द वे फ्रॉम आर पीरियड्स ऑफ रिलेटिव पीस एंड आई वुड से पीस नॉट प्रॉस्पेरिटी फ्रॉम 1996 virtually onwards so everybody in par has an equal uh, they all get elected on the same issues they all do very little to 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 address these very core core and fundamental issues to it but uh, do you think if, if, if like i know on and off you will hear random punjabi singers talking about the drugs issue in a serious way baki to what bothers me now is the degeneration of gangster rap in punjab like i have not seen this level of rubbish in in any other look i understand what gangster rap as a genre is you know we grew up in an era of biggie smalls and tupac and we understand what they were doing at that time ha to matlab aapko aur kuch mila nahi aapne unka ek wohi sabse weird phenomenon utha ke chep diya aapne yahan pe and you have that bloody canadian gangster <laughs> Doing gang wars in India, तू उधर बैठ के कर तेरे को यहाँ पे उंगल करनी है एंड देन यू हैव दिस एंटायर शिनेगन अंडर द गार्ब ऑफ म्यूजिक एक तरफ गुरदास मान जैसे लोग हैं जो बोलते हैं ए करो ओ करो और एक तरफ ये पूरी गैंगस्टर रैप की एक जॉनरा है इनफैक्ट यू नो आई वॉज रिसेंटली आई री हर्ड दैट सॉन्ग की बड़ू दुनिया द जो गुरदास मान का ओरिजिनल वर्जन था 70s में दूरदर्शन में आया था मैं तो डैडी की वजह से पहली बार सुना था डैडी सुनते थे तो हमको बचपन में आदत लग गई डैडी की वजह से एंड देन आई हर्ड द कोक स्टूडियो वर्जन लाइक पीपल डोंट फॉरगेट इवन इन दैट ही टॉक्स अबाउट ड्रग्स इन वन पैराग्राफ ही सेज इट इन हिज ओन पोएटिक वे कि ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द नौजवान ऑफ पंजाब लाइक nobody talks about it like where is the civil society in punjab do they talk about it no i would i i i will say that there are there is a large number of conscious folks in the cities um and pa- in 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 rural punjab who are talking about it who are doing their best to stand up to it with very limited limited resources with almost complete abdication of the of the state in the process and that um, um that has its uh, that has its inhibitions and its uh, and its and its limitations on the broader issue of where our songs and music and culture has gone i think that's on one part as a freedom of speech absolutist i'm going to say that they can say whatever they want to and they should yeah same here want to want to say but at the same time i think music and art always reflects um reflects what uh, is 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 in some form or the other social commentary and it is commentary about about what punjab is going through right now and it's also it's giving um it gives impetus to to gangsters and and crime and and the relationship between crime and drugs is age old they they can't exist in a, they can't they they always coexist there is no unless you legalize uh, drugs and you cannot be go around legalizing heroin and uh, and you know um, and other other chemicals and in the absence of that it's always gone gone hand in hand so it is i i'm always surprised when folks say we you know the dr- the gang problem is new the gang problem is as old as the drug problem it is it is they they came up together at the same point of time and as the drug problem has gotten more and more extreme the gangs have become that much more powerful their ability to their ability to dictate terms their ability to to um um uh, communicate fear has become that much uh, that much more yeah all right let's let's take a f- two three uh, viewers questions before we wrap it up so two are comments i i want to read it because these are people who genuinely you know feel for this like one person has said my sikh friend was so embarrassed on what happened in the indian embassy sfo we were walking by the consulate i felt bad for him as well 
I was like, first of all, you know, whosoever has written this, I just want to tell you, your friend doesn't have to apologize for anything. उसे ना थोड़ा किया है यार ये कलेक्टिव गिल्ट का फंडा भी बंद करना चाहिए हमको यार मेरा क्या लेना मैं मैं तो रास्ते से जा रहा था किसी ने और तोड़ा तो मुझे क्यों तोड़ रहे हो तुम तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ये भी नहीं होना चाहिए somebody has said please people should know the difference between Sikhs and Khalistanis Khalistani is uh, maybe whatever but Sikhs are our brothers and they are an integral part of our civilization so I wanted to read this as somebody has written this as a comment and and I and, and believe me genuinely this is the overwhelming sentiment like I don't know how to say this but uh, p where and I am not approving this so people should not say I have seen people being very sensitive to the Hindu Sikh question I I I sense that people are very sensitive to it they like ni ye wala jhagda kuch bhi ho jaye ye wala jhagda nahi hone denge hum log but now somebody has asked and because we started off uh, so this is like a geopolitical question is like for share bhi why do you think this idea of a landlocked religious theocracy is something people in the diaspora cannot give up on it clearly cannot survive sikhs would be economically and culturally crippled then why do you think that diaspora sikhs a section of them come up with this uh, hair braid idea as they say i couldn't for the life of me put myself in their shoes <laughs> i couldn't for the life of me know where uh, their their um diminutive view of the world the how they believe geopolitics works or how trade works and the fact that almost the most of the diaspora lands in delhi and then goes to punjab and sort of has an institution on the way which is the murthal dhaba or the karnal dhaba so i don't i don't think they appreciate what all is going to uh, what all is going to change but i think at the same point of time i i want to just reply to that previous comment i agree i don't i don't and i and i think this is where we need to come together as indians first is none of us should be justifying our patriotism nobody needs to you know i saw there was a filmmaker who mentioned that let all sikhs to show patriotism put a flag there are every village and every third house in punjab has a folded flag that came back um um that's come back for somebody who's been killed in action so none of us need to show patriotism none of us need to sort of get a certificate on anything and we don't have to feel embarrassed as as sikhs we need to feel we need to condemn whatever else happens outside as 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 indians these are they are acting against indian interests fair enough now the, this again is a question i know this comes from the heart uh, and this is uh, how so the first part of the question uh, is more anguish he's like how did sikhism how can sikhism be localized just to punjab and then the person explains their logic He, the person says it was always pan india banda singh bahadur panj pyare or many other sikh pugs are always from other parts of india so ye like do you think again the khalistani demand wo alag baat hai wo map mein pura india dal dete hain magar pakistan kabhi nahi dalte matlab guru nanak dev ji ki jagah ko hi unhone chhod diya unhone wala nahi usko usko aur to ja tells you how intellectually bankrupt the 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 ideology is but yeah, uh, yeah so what do you make of this like can we reduce sikhism to just punjab no i i don't think any religion can be reduced to a it may have it may have events of significance it may have historical and cultural ties to a particular place but no religion today cannot uh, anywhere you know it's um, religion is as is the first global export and um, and it's 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 global it's not it one it would be improper to say that that uh, sikhs are punjab and punjab is sikhs no and in fact if you look at um, if you look at our demographic um, it's not yeah I, i i couldn't agree more with you it is it is to me sometimes i feel i always say this and i don't say this like as in mai aapse kuch lena chahta hu but I find it so offensive when you know a Khalistani comes and tells me, "Ye guru hamare hai." I'm like, "Huh? Nee, bhai, mere hai. Just, mere just, hai. just like, just like the the Bhagavad Gita is not just for Hindus. It's it's yeah. sure. it's so, yours. It's everybody's, yeah. and it's I, I would say it is it is. Uh, it is our collective it it is it is uh, our collective human heritage 
the same way um same way uh, the sikh gurus are not just us they are collective human heritage um and and that's pretty much where it where it ends yeah that and that's how it should be i i wish more people had that level of common sense but uh, before we uh, wrap things up sherbir uh, is there anything else that you wanted to specifically mention or cover i think there the the only pa- last part that um that i haven't sort of touched upon um which we sort of didn't get to is sort of the crisis within the sikh faith itself the um the rampant casteism in punjab and the impact that 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 impact that casteism has on lack of inclusion as in very few people know this in kushal i know you pointed it out before we started talking that we have one of the largest dalit populations um um in in punjab and we have it is it is sikh clergy that has gone against the very tenets of sikhism by disallowing people to come to gurdwaras by not letting uh, and which has then recreated in the dera problem and then a conflict between one school of sikhism with the the deras the um um the um expansion of christianity in punjab this is also a social um problem that we are um dealing with and as in i'm as far away from from marx as as anybody could be but you know when when religion is the opiate of the masses in and in a circumstance when there are very few alternatives economically politically it again has a it again has a um a, it again becomes a center stage center stage problem i agree i agree and uh... i've always said in fact i i use the because khalistan movement i always say this it's not just a separatist movement it's a ethno casteist supremacist movement it is very casteist in its core like boy have i seen casteism in those people they, they will use caste slurs left right and center they don't even know that uh, they what they are uh, getting into and casteism is a problem in punjab in general yaar कितनी बार मैंने बोला है कि यार वो जो हमारा वाला के वर्ड है वो बंद करो यार बोलना आई मीन आई विल टाइप इन द प्राइवेट चैट सो दैट यू नो व्हिच वर्ड आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वी शुड नॉट यूज दैट वर्ड यू नो व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट नाउ हमें नहीं बोलना चाहिए यार इज अ वी गॉट अ पैन इंडिया प्रॉब्लम ऑन इट एंड इट वुड बी एंड एंड एट द सेम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम अम इट्स वी हैव अ पैन इंडिया प्रॉब्लम इट्स नॉट समथिंग दैट्स आइसोलेटेड टू पंजाब बट एट द सेम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम um since we are talking about problems of punjab it would be a miss and remiss to not uh, uh, to not uh, highlight it yeah and and this is why like i i'm glad you brought this up and i'm glad both of us are talking about it because I, and and i'm not uniquely making it about like sikho mein hi jatiwad hai anybody who knows this podcast i am annihilate jati varna central i i want to annihilate the damn thing i don't even want to keep it nuke it so i genuinely believe this is a pan india sada sada hua gala hua system that needs to go and and you know i'm i am happy that there are many people cutting across socio political religious ethnic affiliations that are willing to do this and uh, i wanted to end today's podcast by reading a few lines of punjabi by two people who i have a lot of i think three punjabis that i have a lot of respect for one is bulesha i call him punjabi abhi jisko jo samajhna hai samajh le baki wo theek hai ek hai gurdas man aur ek hai Sh- uh, shiv kumar batalvi i these are my three uh, f- uh, favorites but i am going to only read lines of bulesha where i think today's podcast was inspired on these lines where bulesha says mu ai baat na rehndi hai uh, basically it means that what's on the tongue must be said aur jo zubaan pe hai wo bolna chahiye jhoot aankha kuch bachda hai if i speak the untruth something remains sach aankha bambar machta hai if i speak the truth the fire is lit dona galla to ji jachda hai i'm afraid of both the outcomes jach jach ke jeeva kehndi hai muai baat na rehndi i think that that is a sentiment a lot of us 
face right if we speak the truth something is happening if we don't speak the truth something is happening so my answer to that uh, bullesha kanandram has always been that much better to speak the such much better to talk about things openly and uh, the other was the drugs line in, in uh, by gurdas man where he says nashiyate patte punjabi gabru khankan haddiyan bajan dhamru saasta ne maar di maar li jawani chad di dil mile kithe ak kithe lad di i think that was the best and the most beautiful way to explain what uh, you know drugs has done to punjab and i wish modern day punjabi rappers could actually talk about things like man saab talks about but i guess abhi to gurdas man ko bhi cancel kar denge na i think i'm going to i'm going to try and leave on a on a different note which which has always inspired me with hope um and a big bullish a fan as well but i'm going to actually um at times like this it's it's aj akha varish shanu from um amrita prakash which which really um which really stands by and stands tall yeah i agree i agree that was also uh you know what the interesting bit is everybody talks about the heer varis yaar mere ko sher bhi agar ye heer dhund ke de doge na see most people don't know that heer was written by damodar das agarwal it was a play written by damodar das and then varis made it a poetry right so varis wali famous ho gaya this is my request to all punjabis oh bhai दमोदर दास अग्रवाल की अगर हीर मिल जाए वो वाली वर्जन भी दे देना मैं पढ़ना चाहता हूँ और सुनना चाहता हूँ दिस इज माई रिक्वेस्ट टू शेर बीर एंड एवरीबडी एल्स एंड वील एंड ऑन दैट नोट शेर बीर इट वॉज अ प्लेजर टॉकिंग टू यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग एंड आई होप वी हैव मेनी मोर कॉन्वर्सेशन बियॉन्ड पंजाब ऑल्सो अबाउट इंडिया इकोनॉमिक्स एंड मेनी अदर थिंग्स मे बी क्राइम और कॉपरेट लॉज और इन सब के ऊपर भी बात करेंगे सो वंस अगेन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग थैंक यू कुशल थैंक यू सो मच All right, guys. We'll wrap today's discussion up. But as always, before wrapping up, in the description of the podcast, you'll find share B social media credentials. Please go and follow him on Twitter. And if you like what I'm doing over here, please like this channel, subscribe to the podcast, support it. If you're an audio listener on the audio platforms, support the platform by becoming a member. Also, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, namaste. Take care. Bye.